We begin with TCP versus UDP. TCP, or the Transmission Control Protocol, provides reliable service between hosts. TCP acts as an intermediary between IP and the application being used. TCP is known as a connection-oriented protocol, and examples of applications that use TCP to make these connections include web browsers, email applications, and much more. In fact, most applications use TCP as their transmission method. UDP, or the User Datagram Protocol, provides less reliable service between hosts and is often used by streaming media, for example, voice over IP, IP television, and online games. Let's show an example by making some connections to remote hosts and showing those connections with the netstat command. First, I'm going to go to my browser and connect to google.com. When I type that in, HTTP initiates a session with the google.com web server. Another example would be in Windows Explorer, I could go to my network attached storage, which is a mapped network drive. That starts an additional session. To see these sessions, we'll go to the command line and run a netstat command. When we run netstat, we get four columns of information. It shows us the protocol being used, the local computer, which is my computer, the foreign address, which is any host that I'm connecting to, and the state of the connection. It's established or it's waiting for information, that sort of thing. And if we look here, you'll see 172.30.250.6. That is the network attached storage that I'm connected to. And uh, by the way, in the past, we've connected with the 192.168 networks and the 10 network. Uh, another network that this computer is a member of is 172.30. That's where I store, store all my data. And here you'll see also the Google.com connection from my computer. Now, if we wanted to get more information, we could run the netstat-a command, which not only shows TCP sessions, but also shows UDP sessions. Now, in this case, it's just listening for UDP sessions. So there's nothing really happening at this point. Everything's connected through TCP. And the bulk of the applications I use do make TCP connections. Next, let's talk about ports. These are individual doorways that your network adapter, or NIC, uses to send data. And there's 65,536 of them. They're numbered between 0 and 65,535. So it's a 16-bit system. The beauty of this is that a user can access multiple remote computers at the same time, regardless of the fact that they have a single serial connection to the LAN. Remember that your network adapter or your dial-up adapter connects to the internet in a serial fashion, meaning one bit at a time. Let's show an example of this now. We'll go back to the command line and take a look at the results of our netstat command. And over here in the last TCP session, you'll see my computer, laptop-author, colon 1097. Well, when you see a colon after the computer name or after an IP address, you know it's going to be followed by a port number. So colon 1097, that's the port number I'm using to make an outbound connection to my network attached storage, which is using the NetBIOS session port. Now, to see this information numerically, we can run an AN parameter. So once again, here's my computer, but now it's showing the IP address, 172.30.250.3, and the port number I'm using, 1097. Here's the uh, network attached storage, 172.30.250.6, and it's using port 139. That's the NetBIOS session port. Let's further define how ports work with inbound versus outbound ports. And we'll use your local computer as the example. Now, inbound ports are used when another computer wants to connect to a service or application running on your computer. In that case, your computer would open an inbound port to allow that connection. Outbound ports are used when your computer wants to connect to a service or application running on another computer. So if you want to go out to the web and connect to a web browser or download your mail, you'll open an outbound port to that remote computer. A client computer will normally use outbound ports, and these will normally be assigned dynamically by the operating system. Here's an example of an outbound connection from a laptop. Here's my laptop, and here's port 3266 going outbound through the internet and out to a web server. This web server needs to have port 80 inbound open so I can make that connection. 
So I'm requesting information from the web server. I'm going out through 3266, through the internet, and in on port 80 of that uh, receiving computer. Let's show an example of that now in the command line. We'll go back to the information that we displayed with Netstat, and we'll take a look again at this last TCP session. Here's my computer, and here's the port number, 1097. That is indeed the outbound port number that I'm using to go out and connect to my network attached storage. And network attached storage has the inbound port 139 open, waiting for those connections. And that's how it works with web servers also. If a web server wants to uh, display its information to the internet, it has to keep that inbound port 80 open all the time. Otherwise, people won't be able to see it.